All right, hello everybody. Welcome back. We've got Dignitas versus Vox Eminor. Obviously, the Danes against the Australians. And my name is Kainite, and alongside me is Chewy. And Chewy's got his mic muted. Good job, Chewy. Chewy, unmute your mic, and hopefully uh, you guys will be able to see the game in a short amount of time. Assuming Chewy hops on as well. Otherwise, I'm going to end up casting this solo. Give me a few minutes whilst I just spam him on Skype. Hopefully, he'll be back. So, guys, we've got Didos 2. Obviously, this is going to be the first we see of both Dignitas and Vox Emino. Obviously, both sides participated in Katowice. Dignitas did somewhat significantly better than their Australian counterparts. And Chewy, you've unmuted. Are you alive? I, I didn't even hear you go live. I just said hopefully he's going to unmute. And that was the first thing I heard you say. So I'm not quite sure what happened there. All right, well, you're alive and you're with us. and that's I am alive, just about, just about alive and ready to go. Good. Well, hopefully they fixed, uh, they'll have fixed the stupid in-game radio command error mistake we had uh, last time around. And hopefully... We'll have a good game on our hands. Now, predictions. I know you don't like answering predictions, but come on, it's Dignitas against Box Seminar. Who do you <laughs> think is going to win? Well, I say that I don't like uh, answering predictions, but I'm 6 out of 6 on my Pick'em Challenge predictions for today, actually. So I guess I'm on a roll, so I might as well predict uh, the last game that we're going to cast here on Thursday for ESL 1 Cologne. And, of course, you know, as a lot of people expect, I'm going to put my uh, money down onto Dignitas. They've really been impressing me recently. They've been impressing a lot of people recently. And I don't want to take anything away from the Australians, but uh, I know that they've... Um, They've had a few time constraints recently. Um, I was reading their article um, that they did an interview with HLTV, and they've been struggling with time constraints. Uh, they've had to share any boot camp experience that they've kind of had with their battlefield team. Um, so, you know, it's been a difficult one, though. But one thing that I've got to say, which is going to be good here for Vox Eminor, is the fact that they're on Dust 2. Again, reading uh, the HLTV interview that Sponge held, um, basically. You know they haven't had much time to practice the new maps whatsoever because there's no other Australian team or team in their kind of region who need to practice them, who need to worry about them. So they've really struggled to get some good practicing on those maps. But the fact that they're going to be starting here on Dust 2 and they're going to be starting on the T side, I feel is going to be good for them. Yeah, and as well, DDoS 2 is just one of those maps that everyone knows better than they know the back of their own hand. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, in an ideal world, Vox Eminor wouldn't be wanting to come into a, a, a cobblestone or an overpass or maybe even something like a nuke which Team Dignitas are really good at because, hey, you're not a Counter-Strike player if you don't know DDoS 2 back to front, you know what I mean? And th that small random factor about DDoS 2, the fact that everyone just knows it so well, we talk about it a lot in ESL UK when we see mixed teams often beating real teams on DDoS 2. We say that DDoS 2 is one of those more balanced maps where anything can happen that requires, that is less team orientated like Nuke and Inferno for example, um, as it seems to suit a more free style of playing and good no scope from Havoc and it seems like the players have some sort of warm up issue. No, it's sorted. But yeah, so I think I think it'll definitely work in favour of Vox Eminor to, uh, to be on DDoS 2 because uh, I think I've summed it up really. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah, you know, as they said in their interview, not quite confident on the new map, so the fact that they are going to be on a map, which they know well, is going to play good here, but all the same, Dignitas, one of those teams who just put up some crazy numbers on the board, they performed incredibly well at Gfinity 3 just a couple of weekends ago, actually managing to finish off third and fourth there, they were top of their group, if I'm not mistaken, and really had a good showing on Saturday, and they carried that through onto Sunday, unfortunately did lose out to the eventual winners, which was Virtus Pro here, um, but you know Dignitas are one of those teams who are not only in with a good shot of taking this match. I think they're in with a good shot of taking this group. And I also think if they play at their very best, uh, they're one of the teams which has got a shot at taking the title. Yeah, because me and you were both at G3, and to be fully honest, it wasn't just me and you saying this. It was pretty much everyone there. Like, I was sat in the crowd talking to people, and everyone was just saying, "Yep, yeah, based on what we've seen so far." It's Dignitas' tournament to lose. And then Virtus Pro, a wild Virtus Pro appeared. But anyways, it's a piss around. Dignitas versus Vox Eminor. Team Dignitas are going to start as the counter-terrorists. And Chewy, take us away. 
Right, here we go into Dust 2. I'm looking forward to seeing this one and seeing what comes out here for the Danish team and the Australian team. And it looks like it's going to be an aggressive push over towards Catwalk. Zipnix, he was my player for G3 to watch out for. He really did uh, show us exactly what he can do when he's playing his best at that tournament. So we'll see if he's going to be able to do that again here. But in comes the push and Vox Eminor. They've already got the bomb down very, very quickly indeed. Dupree's being caught out by Havoc onto Catwalk. And it looks like AZ will be two. This does take down Sponge, so it is a five, uh, sorry, a four versus three situation. JKS is going to stop another one there, but this is looking really good here for the team from Australia. They had a great push through Catwalk, and they're going to finish off the pistol round with relative ease. <laughs> relative ease, indeed. Using your word there, indeed. Because <laughs> you know, Vox Eminor, they didn't reinvent the wheel. They smoked mid and pushed short. You know, good old-fashioned Counter-Strike, but it's worth noting that Team Dignitas didn't exactly have a Counter-Terrorist on short. So you can definitely tell that Vox Seminor have done their homework. They've looked at who they've got in their group and decided what maps uh, beforehand they're going to they're gonna veto. And basically, uh, you know, take a look at, for example, Team... They, they'll have said to themselves, right... Team Dignitas will veto Overpass, will veto Cobblestone, will veto Inferno, which leaves the Dust 2, Nuke, da di da di da So we need to do our homework against Team Dignitas. We need to get as many Team Dignitas demos as we can and do our homework on Team Dignitas and understand how they play. And it's also worth mentioning that Team Dignitas demos are, are, are a lot easier to access than, for example, the other way around. It's mu uh. going to be much more difficult for Team Dignitas to get information about Vox Emino, but we uh, do have a one-for-one -one trade here. AZR is going to try and push off short with the Galil. Knows exactly where AZ is at Graffiti. And Vox Emino, they're just going to take their time here on short. They know there's someone at Graffiti. Top Gun, well anticipated by him. He's realized that there could have been a CT at long. Who's going to try and flank him from behind. And they've thought to themselves now, right, we want to hit this A-bomb site. We don't want to go to the B-bomb site where the CZs can do damage. We want to keep things at long distance and use our AKs for what they're good at. And they're going to face AZ. And it should be an easy round for them from this point on, Chewie. Should be indeed. But it's a 2-1, mate. A 1 versus 3 is thing standard. AZ does get finished up there by Havoc, who got another kill as well just beforehand. So the bomb's going to get planted. Two successful bomb plants out of two attempts here for the team from Australia. And Device is going to be the last man left alive. And by the looks of things, he's happy just to sit back over towards Long Doors there and just wait and see if any ep exit frags are going to come his way. He has got that CZ 7.5s and he is going to meet up with at least two players any second here. I'm not quite sure if they know that he's there. They do indeed. His head's going to get taken off. That's going to be 2-0 in favour of the T side here. Only two casualties for them, which was Sponge and Top Gun. And uh, Team Dignitas, they haven't really put too many frags on the board so far. Only four. Um, so that means that they're not going to be able to have any early buys here. It looks like it's going to be another case of CZ 7 fives for them. Fetish deciding to go for a uh, high explosive grenade as well. But that's going to be it. So into round three we go. Yeah, let's go and see where he's actually going to throw that nade. Looks like, yeah, he threw it into Long Hut. Unfortunately, it's not going to deal too much damage as the Australians have wasted no time infiltrating this B bomb site. JKS dropped one. Dupree got a frag, but it's not going to be enough as AZR gets the return kill. And now Dignitas find themselves trying to rotate to the B bomb site. Top Gun from behind gets one. Can't get the second. And again, Vox Eminor, from this point on, they shouldn't lose this. They've got control of the B-bomb site, the bomb's going down, they've got more firepower, they've got stronger firepower, they've got Galil's. They're three versus one, and there we go, AZR, brilliant round for him, he got a hat-trick, and uh, probably deserves a pat on the back after that. But, he does. Team Dignitas now, this, this is where they're going to show us what they're made of. They are a CT bias side. A lot of people say they need to improve their, improve their terrorist side of their game, and I agree. Now, Device has picked up the AWP and they've got the rifles rolling. Look at the amount of nades they have. Now, Vox Eminor need to stand up and show us what they're truly made of. Yep, indeed. And we've only got one AWP on the playing field by the looks of things, which will be in the hands of Device here. So, this is it. Into round number four we go. The first full rifle round of the game here on Dust2 and I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to happen and we can't, you know, I always talk about it and I'm going to talk about it again here we really cannot emphasize enough how important this round here is for Dignitas, you know, repeating your point, the fact that they are a CT favored team if they go 4-0 down here and lose this rifle round, which is by the looks of their economy going to force them back onto an eco 
which would have then made you think that it would be 5-0 to Vox Eminor. That's not going to be good, and they're already going to start to get jittery, I would have thought about that. But they're one of those teams who can really pull performances out of the bag when they need to, and I really wouldn't be surprised here if, after losing those first three rounds, that they come back and take this fourth round here. At what push it's going to be though for the T's though, in they go, we saw them successfully do this in round number one, in come the flash grenades, Zipnix is blinded, he's going to peek, now he gets completely smoked off there, but they've actually changed things up, so catwalk is not going to be the option, it's going to be mid, it's not worked out for them so far though, that's going to be three frags in favour of Dignitas, JKS responding on to Dupree. But they know where the bomb is, it's stuck in mid, and the last two players left alive for the Australian team are in a bit of a tricky spot. Yeah they are, but Ooh. AZR gets two. But he knows that he's still got a long way to go to try and pick up this bomb. And Chewie, when they tried the mid to be push, I think their main downfall was they put the smokes down, but they didn't actually utilize flashes as AZR's made it three. And with seven seconds to go, Fetish knows he needs to run down the clock. AZR's going for him. But AZR, despite the fact that Vox just lost that round, AZR take a bow, son. Terrific yeah, AK it. work. It was a bit close for comfort there for Dignitas after those three frags came in, uh, but still <laughs> able to finish it off, and the, they were able to get that round on the board, so that's good. But again, um, another thing to think about here is that the economy is not really sitting pretty for both teams. Vox Eminor are deciding that although they've got about 3 to 4k in the bank for each player, they're just going to eco things up. We've only got one player with arm, which will be AZR. They've got a couple of grenades in hand, which is of course going to help here on the, C t on the T side. Sorry, um, But Dignitas, because so many of them got picked off by AZR there in that last round, that's going to force them to only have Famas' as rifle and device has got the big green gun, although it's a big white and orange gun, and he's going to start things off here. He's not going to get any frags though, and that uh, gun's actually been dropped right on top of that A bomb site. In comes from the push from Dupree, and this bomb going to get planted. That's really the main objective here for the eco round of Vox Eminor, and that's exactly what they've been able to do. Yep, we've got Zipnix on A ramp, who's going to try and retake it with Fetish just behind him. Brilliant kill from Fetish. 180 spin, landing the Famas bullet in Havoc's head. And yeah, we're going to have 3 2. In favour of Vox Eminor, Team Dignitas slowly but surely crawling their way back into the game, just as we expected them to do after they bought up uh, those big rifles. But like you said, the economical situation that last round was poor for both sides, and it was emphasised by Vox Eminor having to eco and Team Dignitas having to go for the cheaper FAMAS option. Mm, indeed, and uh, just on a little side note, welcome stezzy one g to the subscriber team. Thank you so much for subscribing, my friend. Shout out to you. If anybody else wants to join in on the chat and come say hello to us and come and give us your opinions, please feel free to subscribe, and uh, we will give you a shout out as always because all of our subscribers are greatly appreciated. But back into the game, sixth round we go. Dignitas with two rounds on the trot. They've still got those Famases in hand, and Dupree's going to find the first place. So that's Havoc down, and that's a big kill to start that off and drop down that gun. But in comes the push towards the B bomb site here. Dignitas need to be careful, and they definitely need to be careful now because AZR has opened up with that AK 47. It's a 3 versus 3 situation. They need to get that bomb, done, but bomb down. Sorry, Vox I mean, all. That's exactly what they're going to do. Let's see if the team from Denmark can retake this B bomb site. It's going to be hard because Device has that AWP, it's so big, it's so heavy, especially when Vox Eminor keep putting smokes down. And Judging by the player's current movement, it looks like the Rifles might try to go for it. It's going to be the X1.6 man in Zipnix to get the first frag. AZR, hat-trick for him! He's hungry for the fourth, but Device, to no surprise, is just going to fall away. He's just going to fall back and save that AWP, and I don't blame him for looking to do so. But if we take a look at the scoreboard, AZR, 10 kills and 3 deaths. Wow. He's been absolutely sensational so far. Yeah, his AK shot has just absolutely been on point, which is great to see in these early stages of the game, of course, for both of these teams. This is the first game of uh, the tournament for them, so the fact that they can pick up some big rounds like that and the AZR can perform so well in these early uh, rounds here is always good to get those land jitters out of the way. Round number seven we go, though. Vox Eminor with a two-round advantage, and Havoc is going to put that shot down there, and he dinked Dupree down to seven HP. Wasn't able to pick up the kill, though, and we'll see if that's going to pay any dividends into this game. We did have one player, which I believe was Device. Peek onto Catwalk there, but he's rightly so backed away from that one and not challenged anything silly as it stands. But round number seven we are, and I'm already wondering how that... Uh, Sniper shot that went down onto Dupree is going to affect the round. Well, it's going to be Device who's interestingly trying to hold short with the AWP. He got a frag, but one frag is 
it's probably not going to be enough. We've got Havoc holding mid, nails AZ, and Dignitas finally find themselves one man down. And let's see what our friends from down under can pull out the bag here. We've got AZR and lower tunnels. In fact, all of Vox Eminor. Team Dignitas, for my liking, have given them mid control far too easy. Um, w we see them playing around mid all the time. They come and go in and off short when they feel like it. And now we're probably going to see some sort of mid to B push, but they didn't really catch Zipnix out there. He knew exactly what was going on. And Havoc, three versus one. He's running back towards tunnels with the bomb. I'd be really surprised if he tried to genuinely go for this with only the AWP, he'll have spotted Dupree and you know what, he's pushing in but down he goes and I don't know about you Chewie but I felt he would have probably been better off trying to save that weapon. Yeah I agree, I think he would have been but wasn't the case to be and Lux Eminor's money's not sitting pretty whatsoever so they should eco this one and that's exactly what it looks like they're going to do here as we go into round number eight and another shout out to Yota Ninja apparently didn't come up in the stream chat that you subscribed uh, but a shout out to you anyway thank you for subscribing and anybody else who we may have missed shout out to all of you as we go into this next round here it should be a an easy anti-eco bash win here for Dignitas if they can take this one easily but you never quite know we were talking about it earlier on today me and Kyle I love to talk about it a lot about how powerful these pistols are here on CSGO and you never quite know with them these eco wins just seem to come out of absolutely nowhere sometimes and by the looks of things it's a one for one trade AZR knocked down a 7 HP that bomb still stacks up over towards long doors at the minute no initial indications about where it could eventually be heading yeah with the bomb outside of long and one person in tunnels, one person on short, one person on mid. I fully agree. This, this, this could be pretty much anywhere. Device has managed to shut down Havoc, which is always a good start for the Danes. They'll be eager to even things up at 4-4. Four, four. And my main problem with Vox Eminor at the moment is that they've got these CZ-75s. I don't think going to the A-bomb site is, uh, is too good of an idea. But then again, you think about it from the other perspective. They've not really got smoke, smoke out CT spawn. So they're pretty much... It looks like they're pretty much doomed wherever they go. Um, mm. Unless someone acts as a decoy on short and then someone, for example, tries to flank through long! Oh, ho, 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 ho. Top Gun, welcome to the server. Great 1D from him. And I said it needed something special and maybe that 1D is going to be that something special. AZR doing what AZR does best by popping heads. But Zipnix is going to be the Dane to save the day just about with a hat trick. But... Blimey, DDoS 2 today, an eco round. Right, it's just, it's just been, been nuts. nuts, man. It, it has, it has. And, and I love it, I really love it when things get shaken up like this. But not quite as much of a shake up as it could have been. See, it makes the eco been. rounds more exciting from a yeah, spectator's it does. perspective. It really does. You know, I was talking to Scoots about this um, at uh, Gfinity 3 just the other weekend. And, and, you know, like when it used to be eco rounds in previous versions of CS, it was just like, right, we know the next score, you know, you can write it down, get ready for when they can buy up rifles, like, and just get on with it. And now, you really have to pay attention here to teams on ecos. And time and time again, and more and more often, are we seeing teams getting a, a bit more nervous uh, when those ecos are coming towards them, even when they've got the more powerful rifles. But, Fox Seminar are looking good here. And uh, they've got that bomb down on the A bomb site. It'll be interesting to see how Dignitas attempt to retake this one. They have got the man advantage. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be an easy job for them. In comes the push towards Catwalk. Didn't flash uh, onto Top Gun as much as they would have hoped to. It's a two for two trade as things stand. Three versus two situation. AZR responds with his great AK-47 shot. That's his second. Sponge wow. finishes up. Three headshots in a row. Sorry. AZR with few, hu three sorry, huge frags. I can't even talk right now. He's impressing me so much. And also on another note, shout out to Niz or Kniz or however you pronounce your name for subscribing. Welcome, good sir. 5-4 is the score in favor of Vox Eminor here. And AZR has just been the man so far, Kai Knight. Does anyone else think that Sponge looks a lot like Nicholas Bentner? <laughs> and I don't know if you've ever seen Sponge, but he popped up on the analysis desk during Katowice. And I couldn't believe this my eyes. He looks like, like Nicholas oh, Bentner. What's, what's Nicholas Bentner doing on the Katowice analysis desk? But anyways, <laughs> thanks to that win from Vox Emino. Oh, <laughs> fetish blown to smithereens already. Um, like I was saying, thanks to that win from Vox Emino, they have forced their Danish opponents down onto an eco. Device is just about gonna avoid that nade. It only did one uh, one one point of damage to him. But it's still, of course, anyone's round. You just in CSGO you just can never rule out teams when they've got the CZs and the USPs and the P250s. They just 
They're so damn good. <laughs> yeah, they are. It's as, it's as simple as that. It really is. Uh, is is it a man advantage in favour here of the T side, with Fetish being that casualty earlier on to that frag grenade going down. But still, you know, the T's are playing this incredibly slowly. It looks like they're eventually going to make their push over through long now. But with 39 seconds left on the clock, they need to do something, and they need to do something quickly. Device is going to go down, which is going to open up long a bit more for them. There are two other players left to go. Zipnix is going to get shut down. And we see Dupree in a very tricky spot with that CZ75. He's managed to knock one player out for the count. That's Top Gun down, but I have a feeling it's still going to be too much of a difficult task for them. In comes the plant for long here from Havoc. And they've got a great setup here. Yeah, this A bomb site from the two players who, of course, we can't mention enough, only got pistols. Havoc shuts down one. Is he going to get second? Yes, he does. 6 4 is the score. Yes, it is. And. As a matter of fact, I just noticed something. Lurpis wanted me to change the crosshair. And you didn't. He, he, I didn't. He, I he was, was going to give you some love if you did that, and, and that was like two games ago. Hashtag blame Kainite. Dude, I don't need Lurpis' love. He doesn't give love to anyone. But <laughs> I've changed my crosshair, and I don't know if the people on, the str on, on stream will prefer it like this, but this interesting addition symbol as a crosshair, why not? Let's say, let's give it a go, as long as we can keep Lurpis happy, I think all of us will remain happy. But Dupree through the smoke, not a bad start for Team Dignitas. It's nice to see that they've changed the flag to a Danish flag, because everyone riots normally when it's the British flag. Oh, that was crazy the other day when we casted yeah. them, it was just, it was the main topic but All the of Danish discussion. people, how dare they try to say they're British? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was just the main topic that everybody was talking about, not what was actually going on in the game. And that was actually a pretty good game that we cast it there. Uh, yeah, but anyway, on another note, another shout out. I seem to be doing all of these today, which is fine by me because I love welcoming new people to the uh, sub squad. So welcome to Panther Game. Thank you very much for subscribing, good sir. And apparently it's pronounced Azza, not AZR. Well, thank you for subscribing and, and letting us know that. We do duly appreciate it. He pays us to share his knowledge. What a nice man. <laughs> but anyways, honest, on, honestly, we really appreciate it. But anyways, we don't want to sit and talk about subs. I want to focus on the game as Vox Seminor begin the mid-to-B push as they uh, slowly rush. Well, they can't really slowly rush towards this B-bomb site, but look who it is. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Three kills from AZ. And he came under a lot, of, uh, a lot of fire after G3. A lot of people were saying that he wasn't really performing. But if we take a look at the scoreboard, he's not doing too badly so far in relation to the rest of his team. No, he's really not. Um, yeah, having a look at that scoreboard, it's uh, it's looking okay for both squads. Sponge only two, two and eight of the second, but I'm sure he's going to be able to pick up his game here. And uh, AZR, of course, really the man that's impressing so far, and leading us to think that Vox Ebador could stand a good chance here on Dust to have taken this one. They have got that one round advantage, but it should all be evened up if things go according to plan. Have a look with the shot into Fetish's head. Is going to even up the situation here, though, in round number 12 we go. Blinded is Dupree as he backs away from that gunfight. And I have a feeling the bomb could be making its way either towards lower tunnels or through mid to B. We'll have to have a look, though. And having a look at the CT setup here, we've got one towards long doors, which will be device. We've got Zipnix just up on that A bomb site, and AZ and Dupree stacked up on B. And here we go. The bomb is actually, as we said, going to be making its way up through lower tunnels to upper tunnels. And they're going to be pushing that B-bomb site in any time soon, you would have thought. Yeah, that was uh, that was time to absolute perfection from Zipnix, that nade towards uh, Nicholas Bent. I mean, Sponge towards mid. But, oh, well, we said easy peasy last time round, and AZ is at it again. He's been an absolute tank in that B-bomb site. But then again, he is only up against uh, the terrorist Seco in. Dupree will take out the last Aussie. And uh, it is going to be even Steven at 6-6. Yeah, now we talked again earlier on about how, uh, you know, Dust 2 being T sided and some people going, it's becoming more and more equal. You know, it, it's not really the end of the world if you land yourself up on the less favoured side here, like it would be on an example from a map like Nuke. Uh, if you land on the T side there, you've really got to play your best right from the start. Um, but Dust 2, you know, I would have thought that Vox Eminor would want to get these last three rounds here. You know, 9 6 would be a really great score for the T side here, and they, and they would be happy with that one. The more rounds that Dignitas get on the board here on the CT side, the better. Um, and Vox Eminor, again, you know, they should know that Dignitas are a CT favoured team. So, again, the more rounds that they can take away from them in that sense, the better. But, I mean, we, we need to take away the fact that Team Dignitas are always better on their CT side than their T side. 6-6 six, six so far, as far as Team Dignitas stand, they're still good as far as they're concerned. Most CT sides, even those who aren't 
that CT that CT bias themselves in the way they play are more than happy with losing 9-6 on their CT half on DDoS 2. So we need to bear that in mind, and uh, it's not going to help if Top Gun keeps flashing himself. But it goes to show we're all human. You know, we all make mistakes when we're playing matchmaking, and these guys make mistakes when they're playing with absolutely no pressure whatsoever. thousand dollars at stake. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. He's, I, I couldn't really put it any better myself. So, no round 13 it is. 6-6 six, six all even here on Dust2, the closest game that we've seen so far that we've casted. Uh, we've seen quite a few results that really have been relatively one favoured so far. Is this going to be a one for one trade here? Over on long top gun gets a kill on Fetis. AGR with that wow. AK 47 finishes two, and he's just been so strong with that. It is all evened up on a two versus two. Now AGR secures the man advantage here, but with eight seconds left on the clock, Device all he has to do is waste time here, and they're going to be able to take it. AGR with that AK is just going to come around the corner. Device <laughs> with a one versus two clutch. Lovely shots with the M4 on the A bomb site. Wow, what a row. Yeah, that was a great one. You see, the irony was that AZR, he got into the B-bomb site. He got in the position to do the damage. He got two kills on two of the CTs near Double Doors. And there was still another CT on the A-bomb site who was looking towards Long, who left himself completely exposed to, AZ, to AZ's position. I think, what, what did someone say, say he's it's called? It's Azza. Azza. Sorry, it's uh, just because I've not casted him before and I've just got AZR stuck in my head. I think it's an Aussie thing. thing like, Azza. It probably Get is. Eye, Azza. Yeah, so it's Hazard from now on. We'll go with Anyways, that. I do apologize. Easy with one. Easy with two. Come on, surely he's going to get the third with the USB. Yes, he will. And Device is going to mop up the rest. 8-6. And maybe if they can make it 9, you might fancy Team Dignitas to take the game. I mean, to be fully honest, most of us fancy Team Dignitas anyways. I don't think any of us expected Vox Seminor to get the amount of rounds they have done. No offense to Vox Seminor. But like I said earlier on, I honestly think teams like Vox Seminor and teams like Wolf have the element of surprise. Mm. They can use it to their advantage and the element of unpreparation. Vox Seminor have come into this game knowing exactly how Dignitas will most likely set up and where their weaknesses are and how they can counter them. Whilst Team Dignitas, to be fully honest with you, they probably only have Vox Seminor's demos from Katowice to work with. Well, we're into the last round of the first half here, Kyle. And Vox Eminor have got the opening frag onto the vice there. It looks like the bomb could potentially eventually be making its way towards long, as the T side from Australia do have control of it. And you know, I yeah, I couldn't agree with your point more. You know, there's so many vods and footage out there of Dignitas uh, for the Australian side to look at. That you know, they have got a, a big advantage in that sense. But we know how much of a strong, resilient squad Dignitas are. So we can't take anything away from them either, and that's why I thought that this potentially could be a, a relatively close game if it comes down to things. But CSGO Labs disagreed with me at first. It was a 92 to 8 uh, percentage in favour of Dignitas for this one. But as things stand, this is looking good here for Vox Eminor. Once again, they've got control of the A bomb site. They are going to get that bomb down, but AZ's even things up, so it's a 3 on 3 situation. Sponge is going to take down Dupree. Dupree with the incendiary grenade onto Sponge, and this is back and forward round number 15 here, Kai Knight. Yeah, I think Havoc spotted AZ, but oh, AZ's going to get the kill. And JKS finds himself completely surrounded. And down he goes. Sent all the way back to T-Spawn. And unfortunately, he's going to be sent to CT-Spawn. Because that was the final round of the first half. So 9-6, Chewy. What do you make of that? Well, uh, you know, having a look at the scoreboard there, we can we can see what goes what's gone on really. And you know, I don't want to put any players on blast because that wouldn't be fair of me whatsoever. You know, all of these teams have earned their Basically, Sponge here. is playing... The Bungie. same way Nicholas Bentner plays football. Exactly, exactly. He's playing like that. So uh, Sponge and Top Gun, six and thirteen. For you Top being Gun. an Arsenal fan would know a lot about Nicholas. I know. Gun. I don't even want to talk about it. Hence why I'm trying to move the subject away. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's uh, that. But you know that that's the thing. You know, having a look at Dignitas on the, Dignitas on the scoreboard there, they're all relatively easy. And you know, only six frags difference between uh, between AZ at the top with fifteen frags and Fetish at the bottom with nine. Um, whilst on the other hand, you know, the biggest difference with Vox Eminor is AZR's picked up a huge 17 frags in, in 15 rounds and Sponge has only picked up three there. So I'm not putting any players on blast, but I have a feeling this game could, you know, it could have been an 8-7 finish after the first half there if those two players had picked up some big entry frags maybe or, you know, been able to get that bomb down and convert off that. But we'll see. Obviously, we're going into the second half in just about 49 seconds time here. And Kai and I, my question is, do you think Dignitas can... Uh, can 
capitalise on this and uh, win this second half here and, and find themselves in a winner's match tomorrow. Yeah, of course. Why not? Obviously, I think the first few rounds might shape what, how the rest, how the remainder of the half might go. But Team Dignitas, sometimes I feel like the fact that everyone emphasizes, including ourselves, that they are so CT biased, that people expect them to be really poor on the terrorist side. What people don't realize is the reason people say they're poor on the terrorist side is because their CT side is so good in comparison mm. to their terrorist side. One thing I really like um, that Team Dignitas execute a lot on DDoS 2, and we saw them do it at G3, if I can quickly fit it in, they 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 send someone onto short and they smoke CT spawn from here. You obviously can't see where I'm drawing, but I'm drawing right underneath short towards the A bomb site, and yeah. they smoke CT spawn. And then what they do is they prepare for a B push, uh, but I think they leave someone outside along, they fake the A bomb site, and then they have someone jump down into CT spawn. So when the rest of the players push mid to B, the CTs who are who are concentrating on double doors on the terrorists coming through double doors end up getting dumped from behind by the person who rotates through CT. And because they end up smoking it, the CTs on the A bomb site don't end up calling it and noticing it. Yeah. But anyways, pistol round, take us away. Pistol round it is, and we've got three players for Dignitas with armor, and the two players, which will be Device and Fetish, who didn't buy armor, landed themselves with a lot of grenades, each getting a full set of grenades that they can possibly buy, of course, with that only $800 that they get in the bank here in pistol rounds. Um, so we'll see what that's going to do, how that's going to pay off for them. AZR, the only man, uh, sorry, Azza, uh, the only man with armor for the Australian side is in, comes to push towards catwalk, it's going to be for Dignitas, they're not playing it as aggressively as we saw Vox Eminor do earlier on when they got the bomb down virtually before the pistol round had started earlier on, AZ's going to get control of mid, no he's not, Sponge finishes him off with the headshot, Sponge has obviously heard us call him out and he's starting to wake up here, that's a great opening frag, but what are, uh, what are Dignitas going to do here to start to push themselves onto the A bomb site, that's a good start here, Device with one, Device with two, and they should be able to get the bomb down here, can I? Yeah, well Device might make it three, and yes, he will device showing the Aussies who's boss and Top Gun let's see if he can live up to his name the answer is no and Dignitas someone said what I said in the chat someone said that they felt that the first two rounds of this half were going to shape the rest of the game and that's what we said chewing it and I completely agree providing that Team Dignitas don't mess this second round up providing they don't fall to the CZ75s of Vox Eminor and they can keep their distance and use those Galils and maybe not the UMP but use the Galils and AKs to what the Galils and AKs are good for then we should see the game go 11-6 and uh, probably even 12-6 because with the CTs being on the more expensive side they won't be able to force a buy in the third round of this second half as opposed to the terrorists if they mm. lost a pistol round and managed to get the bomb down yeah exactly and, and that's a huge uh, you know a thing about the economy of CS is, is when those kind of things happen or when you are on more expensive it side there's so actually much a, more to the game it does and there was a great uh, I don't know if you read it actually existence. I read it the other day um, you know it was it was a um, yeah it was yeah, yeah it was existence you read it yeah it was a uh, on the Titan website I'll see yeah. if I can find a link or if a mod can post a link to it but there was an absolutely amazing article about the economy of CS uh, which was written by our good friends in Titan and shout out to those guys they're just about to play their game against Cloud9 any second now that should be going live but we are more interested with Dust2 between the Danes and the Australian it is going to be another eco as you would expect from Vox Eminor here but that's a good start taking out finish and we see Dupree with that UMP in hand is going to get knocked down as well. He was knocked down initially to 15 HP. Two frags in return though for Asian Device. Smoke Grenade's going to cut off the doors there onto the B-bomb site. The bomb will go down but this is still a 3 on 3 here it is. Zipnix is going to drop AZ in upper tunnels. I think AZ made a bit too much noise trying to trying to uh, march up them them stairs. And Vox Eminor in Havoc and Sponge. Well, they're just they're playing a patient game. They know that that, that they're going to get wrecked if they try to jump through uh, jump through window and actually try to make their way through the doors up against the AK-47s, but. Well, Dignitas have completely left the bomb site here, and I don't know if someone's defusing. Is there someone on the bomb? Unfortunately not, and, well, Havoc tried to steal an AK-47. Couldn't do it in the end, but Team Dignitas there, Chewie, lost a lot of weapons, which they probably shouldn't have. No, they shouldn't have, and considering that initially there wasn't actually a player over and up at dark, 
you know, at the start of the CTs there, when there was only two of them left alive with those pistols, they were just stacked up outside the double doors, and, and still, Dignitas, you know, they started to rotate, it didn't quite work out for them, they were able to pick up the round, there wasn't enough time to get the final frag and defuse the bomb as well, so it will be 11-6, but the fact that Fox Eminor got so many frags on the board will, of course, uh, make them happy that they got to force Dignitas to buy up here, though. They still are on a new coasting stand, Sponge is going to be the first casualty of the 18th round, with an orb shot coming in from a uh, finish, and this is just complete domination over on long there. If there's any kind of standard way to get yourself entry frags and push through long, that was it. Yeah, but let's not get too excited. Vox Eminor are on an eco. True. Let's calm down. AZ doing <laughs> the right thing. He's uh, watching the flank from behind. I think at the moment JK's and Top Gun are probably trying to scourge around to see if there's any weapons they can steal, but obviously none of the team Dignitas players have gone down, so it wouldn't surprise me if they just decided to sit in Long Hut and expect a few terrorists to, uh, to try and run away from the bomb. They've been spotted and, well, AZ does what AZ does best. 12-6. And now, Vox Eminor, I know I said this last time round, but this is where Vox Eminor really need to step it up. They lose this one, they'll find themselves eco in again and find Team Dignitas on 14 rounds. Um, pick and predictions. It's something uh, we know we uh, mentioned in the first game, actually, Chewy. It's 88% in favour of Team Dignitas. Would you agree? I mean, I would, yeah. I mean, I think if everybody had been stepping up to the fashion that we've seen Azza doing in the first half there, and you can't take anything away from Havoc, actually. He's had a good first half, 15 and 14 for him. Um, but, you know, I think if everybody from Fox Eminor had stood up to that kind of level, potentially this could be a, a more even pegging here. But by the looks of things, as soon as Vox Eminor get those rifles in hand, they're starting to pick their game up a bit. It's a three versus three situation. Dignitas do have control of the bomb site on B, and the bomb is going to go down here. And this is the time now for Vox Eminor. I have a feeling if they can't retake this one and they can't get the defuse here, they could be in trouble very quickly, considering the fact that they are already six rounds down here. So in comes the push. Grenades go down. AZ is going to pick up one. Uh, Azza does respond, and AZ is going to get his second. So all left in the hands of Havoc here. He's got to back away from that one. Dignitas just about able to hold on to that B bomb site. So, heading into round number 20, the score will be 13-6, and let's put this into perspective here, kind of like, you know, the scores were relatively even, I believe, at one point they were actually 6-6, all even. Yeah. There we go, that kind of shows what Dignitas can do once they've warmed up. Well, team Dignitas are Team Dignitas. And again, going back to people who said that AZ didn't perform at G3, 23 kills, 11 deaths. A lot of people were, of course, surprised when Cajun B left Team Dignitas or was kicked from Team Dignitas and replaced with this youngster, if you will, who showed he had potential in Reason. I believe he was in Reason before joining Dignitas. He showed he had potential, but people were really, really surprised by his inclusion. Um, but it's interesting as well that Havoc just got the pick offshore onto AZ, probably jinxed him by talking about him, saying how well he's been playing. They'll know that he saved that AWP from the last round, and they'll probably be expecting the rest of Vox Eminor to be on an eco, so they'll probably be looking to perhaps try and edge closer towards a B bomb site, and it looks like that's what they're trying to do. They want to stay away from that AWP, and they want to face the CZs more than anything. They do indeed, just... Well, this round really starts to kick off and go all crazy. Cloud9 managed to take the CT pistol round on Dust2 against Titan, and Titan won the eco in round number two. So that game at the second is actually all even 1-1. Just a quick update for you all there, although I'm sure most of you are keeping up to date with that one as well. But interesting for Titan there. As I said earlier, we're more interested with this game here. 13-6 is going to be the score, and 42 seconds left on the clock. As is in a lovely position just on top of that bomb site, and he's going to pick up one with the... Uh, the CZ75, it's not going to quite work out for them, though, unfortunately, by the looks of things. It is a three on three as things stand. Havoc finishing off Fetish there in the back, and he's going to get caught. He doesn't die from that shot, though. Device eventually punishes him, but let's put this into perspective here because Dupree has got the bomb down. He's going to get chased soon. He's got to get help from that player on long. Can Dupree do this on his own? He's going to get caught around the flank. But the CTs have to be careful of that player on long. They've taken him out. There's one left on the bomb site. It's all left in the hands of Dupree here. He's going to finish it off with a Glock 14-6. And I have a feeling that could be good night Vox Eminor here on Dust2. Good night Vox Eminor. Is the uh, Chewy prediction going to uh, become a reality? Only time will tell. 
So Havoc, again, he's gone for the AWP. AZR, safe to say that he hasn't had as much of an explosive CT side as he did on the terrorist side. Well, I mean, Vox Eminor are yet to get around on their CT side. So again, people go on and on about Dignitas being a CT biased side and their T side not being good enough. But the question at hand now is, is Vox Eminor's CT defense incredibly poor? Or have Team Dignitas really stepped it up as far as their T side is concerned? Again, so many questions that could potentially be asked if, if, if we had some sort of analyst alongside us. But I'm sure Richard in the studios tomorrow will answer all those questions. But here we go, Dupree pushing straight in, catching havoc, and that's Orpa down for the Aussies. Spongy is, well not Spongy, Sponge is going to be the CT to rotate through CT spot. Uh, Zipnik's, uh, along with Device, his left hand man, like cool, calm and collected and prepare for some sort of push towards the A bomb site. Here we go, Sponge is going to get two, AZR as well, Chewy are you alive? Oh yeah, device. I do apologise there, it's my phone rang again so I had again. to mute my microphone, I do apologise. It's apologize. cool, it's cool, you make me look like an idiot but it's cool, but anyways, two versus three, Sponge gets his third of the round and we haven't really seen Sponge do much so far this game but fair play to him, if there's any better time to introduce yourself into the game other than now, then Sponge deserves a pat on the back. Three kills from him with the AWP. We don't normally see him use the AWP, but he, we did, of course, see him go towards CT Spawn to pick it up off Havoc's dead body. And Vox Eminor lived to fight another day. 14-7. Well, again, I don't want to put the guy on blast because we know the potential that Sponge has got. But just to put that last round into perspective, before then he'd only picked up four frags in, in 20 rounds. So after 21 rounds, in that last round, he actually picked up almost half the entire kills that he's picked up in the game just with those three frags there. But here we go, back and forth play. It's going to be two CZ75s for Zipnix and Device will shut down Azza and Sponge. So it's a three versus three. Dupree's got the UMP and Zipnix has actually been able to reward himself with an M4 in hand. So you can't put this past the Dignitas squad here considering the fact that we know what that uh, CZ75 can do. That's Dupree down though. Zipnix is going to try and get that bomb down. He's hidden at the second. Shots tried to go over the top <laughs> from JKS and he will finish that player off on 4 HP. Device gets shut down by Havoc. The defuse will come in. 14-8 is going to be the score. Box Eminor finally getting a couple of rounds on the board here on the CT side but I just have a feeling Kynite that it could potentially be too little too late here. Never say never in Counter-Strike. Are you trying to quote Justin Bieber on me? Oh, what is it with you and Cadian? And Justin Bieber. Every time I say never say never, you both start talking about Justin Bieber. And everyone knows how old the never say never quote is. And that <laughs> it was first a James Bond song before Justin Bieber turned it into a song. <laughs> I mentioned it to you early on. And, oh my god. Chill. I know, considering Why are you talking about I'm Justin like Bieber? One of the biggest honestly? Bond fans out there as well. That's yeah, even same, more embarrassing. Same, exactly. I, who's I who's just... your favourite James Bond? Uh, it's got to just be Sean Connery. I'm same, afraid. same. Yeah, it's just got to be. Maybe anyway, we're made for each other, Chewy, in a non-homo exactly, way. Exactly, exactly. That, Not that's that why we're bros. That is why we are the casting duo because because of things like that. So, anyway, enough about James Bond because we'll talk about that once we finish the stream. Round number twenty-three. It is. We've got two ops on the field. Fetish with one and Havoc with the other here. And once again, it looks like it's going to be a split between Catwalk and Long potentially, although Zipnix here on Long is going to back away from that one, so maybe not so yet. Zipnix, as I said earlier on, the standout player for me just a few weekends ago at G3, really performed well there and was picking up some huge kills. Let's see how he's just doing at the second. He's 16, 9, and 12, so he's had a hell of a lot of assists in this game. Um, but still no indication initially about where that bomb could eventually be heading because they could obviously easily rotate off there. I think it's going to be towards A, but they've got to be careful because Sponge has just taken the first frag onto Fetish there. Havoc gets the second, and that's going to lead Device in a very, very tricky spot. He's down on 4 HP. He picks up one. Is he going to get Sponge? Yes, he is as well. Two great headshots. And what's that going to do now? az has got to start rotating his way through. He is on Catwalk, so he's already made his way over there quickly. Dignitas not out of this round yet. No, not at all. Even though Device is only on four points of health, AZ will even it up at two versus two, and down goes Device. But when you consider how how Vox Eminor sided that round was at one point, I think Device did really, really well to get the extra money by getting not only two kills, but by securing the bomb plant as well. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, let's have a look at this. We can see the economy coming in here for device. They had about between 5k and 3k between them also, so they are going to be able to buy up here, although Fetish is actually only going for a Deagle, so I'm wondering what that's going to play into effect in this game, uh, well, in this round. Um, with that in mind, you know, this could potentially be a 14-10 for Vox Eminor, and that's a time that Dignitas, I think, in my opinion, would start to get a little bit, not jittery, because we know they're a resilient team, but just a bit, okay guys, let's let's make sure we're performing like we were doing earlier on. Let's step it up a gear once again and make sure that we finish out this game. Because Vox Eminor, they've taken a couple of rounds on the trot here. And uh, they are standing a good chance of really showing what they can do on the CT side and bringing this game a bit closer than it is at the current second. But with 1 minute 10 seconds remaining here in round number 24, no casualties as of yet. Nope, uh, like you were talking about, it's, it's, it's all about momentum. Momentum, momentum, momentum is the name of the game. And Fetish, he has to do with just a Desert Eagle, so he's going to be hoping that his teammates can get an opening frag somewhere, get first blood somewhere, and give him a tasty little M4 to use. But anyways, what are Team Dignitas going to do here to try and unlock the Aussie defence? Obviously, flashing uh, your teammate isn't a good start, but Sponge sees them going towards mid to B. He, he, he put Zipnix on 32 points of health, but now JKS is absolutely surrounded. But he does get one nonetheless, and it's three versus three. The bomb will go down on this bomb site. It's being planted for tunnels. Good plant. And again, with the bomb being down in the B bomb site, you wouldn't really expect the terrorists to lose it from this point. There's no real excuse. No, and Sponge just decided to challenge B doors there, and I'm not By entirely himself. sure why. Before and you know, I'm not a pro rotated. player. I've only been interested with CS really since about like I started watching in September last year casually. Started really getting into it in December, Christmas time, uh, and kind of around Calabitzi time, and then only started casting it around March or so. So you know, I'm still relatively new, but even I can question there why Sponge decided to challenge that on his own. He had two players rotating through CT spawn, I do believe. And they had grenades as far as I'm aware, so there was still a good chance there, but he decided to just be a bit cocky maybe, if that's the right word to use, and try and get a kill with an M4. It didn't quite work for them, and they're going to get punished for it here because Dignitas, they're on match point. Here we go, as the stream of terrorist flows into the B-bomb site, Zipnix and Dignitas, the two Danes to get their name on the score sheet as far as this round is concerned. And it is four versus three. It's still more than doable for Vox Eminor, but they need to get a return frag. And, ooh, Fetish missed that AWP shot. Very, very unlike him. Don't get me wrong, he's no Kenny S, but very, very unlike him. AZ is going to blow Device up to smithereens as the retake commences. Zipnix gets two. The X1.6 man will make it three. Four, as a matter of fact, as far as the entire game, as far as the entire round is concerned. And, well, well, well. Man of the match, Chewy. Yeah, man of the match for me, I think it's going to be a difficult one. I think they all perform well. In all honesty, um, I think not just because he's top fragging there, but because, again, he kind of started to prove the doubt was wrong there. Okay, yeah, it's against Vox Eminor, which isn't exactly the, the strongest team in the world, no offense to them. But AZ picked up 24 frags, and there were a lot of big kills and crucial kills that came in there for him. Um, but on another note, you know, having a look at the performance from Azza and Havoc, 25-3 and 19 for as a Havoc with 23, 2, and 19. So they can hold their heads up high. They put up a good fight against Dignitas here, but it just, it wasn't quite their day. No, it wasn't. And, uh, you know what? I mean, I, I know it seemed like we were picking on Sponge a lot. To be fully honest, Sponge is a great player. But going back to that round where he pushed B by himself, and I don't want to mention Sponge because we see professionals do it all the time. But the thing is, when your opponents are on 14 rounds, and you know you lose one more round, you you know after if you, after losing one more round, you know that uh, you'll basically put your opponents on match point. The difference between the top top teams and the teams who you know are in the professional scene but may have not quite reached their full potential is sometimes decision making. Yeah, is sometimes experience. Now, no offense to any of Vox Eminor. Or even any of Dignitas for that matter. But we can't really compare the amount of experience that, for example, Vox Eminor have 
to the experience of get right or to the experience of Forrest, for example, who make the right decision the mass majority of the time. And in Counter Strike, making the right decision can often be the difference between winning or losing a round, which can lead to, if you win the round, you'll lead to your opponent's echoing, which should lead to another round. Mm. But anyway, well, let's take a quick look at the group. Yeah, let's have another look at the group. We've done this every time so far uh, after we finished a game. And uh, we'll have a look at the group again and, and see what's going to happen and see who we predict is going to take what here. Um, so, yeah, as... Group D, Dignitas, Cloud9, Titan, Vox, Eminor. Chewy, first, second, third, and fourth. Now, I'm going to go quick because beforehand I've spent ages doing this one, so I'm going to be as quick as I can. Um, I have a feeling that Titan can actually take it. Um, I think if they win against Cloud9, uh, which is what my prediction for that game is going to be, I think it will be a really, really close match between them and Dig. Uh, but I think Titan can take that one. I think <sighs> I think Dig will finish second, Cloud9 third, unfortunately, although I would love to see them go through. And I think that Vox Eminor are going to finish last, unfortunately. But that's just quick thinking there. And uh, what about yourself? Well, I think as long as Vox Eminor play against Titan and Cloud9, the same way they just played against Dignitas, and don't get any cobblestones or overpasses, which they've admitted that they haven't had much uh, m much of a chance to practice, then, then who knows? Who knows? They showed us that... You know, not a lot of teams can manage to get what was it, eight or nine rounds against De against Team Dignitas on Dealers Do. And again, mm. we've got to keep in mind the disadvantages that those guys have living in in, in Australia. Um, but I do think that they probably will finish last. Naturally, I think everyone will think that. I think you know what, I'm going to put my neck on the line as a Titan fan. I'm going to say Titan will finish first. But in all honesty, it'll come down to Titan versus Dignitas. Um, Titan Dignitas obviously played. Uh, at G3, Dignitas won that battle, but it's a new tournament. It's a few weeks later. Who knows? Who knows? I'd like to see Cloud9 advance, but a lot of people are hyping up Shroud. And I know he's yeah. a streamer, and I know he's a really good player, but I think this is his first European event. And like we said earlier on, Counter-Strike is as much of a mental game as it is a physical game. But, but who knows? Who knows? Who knows, man? It's Counter-Strike, and anything can happen. Anything can happen indeed, and uh, you know, it's been an interesting one. I'm certainly looking forward to watching uh, the Titan Cloud game, which is live at the second, I believe, on stream now. It's about round number 10, and Titan with a 7 2 advantage over there. Um, but let's just recap the games which have happened so far today. I, I don't remember all of the scores, but who's won? So in Group A, Nip uh, was the winner against uh, Wolf or MTS Game God Wolf, and that was actually a really good game. Although the score difference was still, it was about 16-7 or so. We saw some flashes of uh, pretty good play actually uh, on the from eco Wolf. Pistol yeah, yeah, yeah. They took two pistols and two ecos uh, for Wolf there. Um, also in Group A, Hellraisers and Epsilon. Hellraisers were the favourite, but Epsilon absolutely smashed them to pieces. I think it was 16-1 as the final score. Yeah. Group B, LDLC took out London Conspiracy. Um, as you would kind of expect there. Um, although London Conspiracy were in with a shot, they kind of been the dark horse of that group, really. They could have come out on top, they could have finished last, um, and which is exactly what they did, actually. Um, and, uh, yeah, then Na'Vi beat Copenhagen Wolves. Um, group C, Virtus Pro beat that team. We covered that game earlier on. And then Fnatic beat I by Power, and you've just seen Dignitas take out Vox Eminor. So the last... Uh, game to go down in Group D is Cloud9 and Titan, and uh, yeah, I mean, I think we've had some really great games today, kind of. I, my bets on Pick'em Challenge have been perfect so far, so if Titan can finish this one off, which it's looking like they can potentially do, then I'm already going to have that bronze trophy in the bag. Fair enough, but guys, I think it's been a very long day for both me and Chewy. And even though it's only half past five, Chewy, we we, we woke up so early that it feels like it's around ten, ten, eleven o'clock. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I fell asleep earlier on because you know we've been <laughs> having a few breaks in between games, and I was just there like and trying not to fall asleep, trying to make sure that I could uh, stay awake to make sure that I didn't miss any games. But luckily, we didn't. But yeah, that is going to be it, uh, it uh, for us today. We covered the Nip game earlier on. We covered LDLC. We covered Virtus Pro, and we covered Dignitas, so myself and Kai and I have definitely had a good day indeed. And I'm just going to read because we started the day on 7,700 followers, and let's see what we finish on. We finished literally 40 shy of 15,000. So, guys, if you could be absolute legends and just give us 40 single more followers to put myself and Kai and I's channel up to 15,000, that would be absolutely incredible. We're currently standing on 14,959. Wow, amazing. 
But yeah, guys, um, regarding who won that game, Dignitas won. Vox Seminor played uh, semi decently. Um, with regards to drops, not everyone gets drops. It's really random and really rare. Uh, I'm sure a few people who have, who will have been watching this stream will have gotten a few drops. We are an official partnered stream. And uh, again, guys, any any subs, any followers. I I know that a lot of people subbed, and unfortunately, Twitch chat wasn't showing the whole subscription thing uh, in chat. Me and Chewy will uh, will have a word with you all later on, so check your Twitch inboxes. And um, I think we're going to call it a day. Unfortunately, we won't be casting or streaming tomorrow. The main reason ESL brought us in at short notice is that me and Chewy do stuff for ESL UK, which is, of course, the uh, UK branch of ESL. Just how, for example, ESL Turkey are streaming everything in Turkish and stuff like that. And we've been doing the games which have been occurring at the same time as the games on the mainstream because ESL they're awesome people and they wanted to make sure that no one missed any games basically and always had a stream to go to regardless of what game they wanted to watch but anyways you can follow myself on Twitter it's gonna be at Kyanite which is at K-Y-A-N 1 T-E so Kyanite with a 1 instead of a, an I and you can follow Chewy on Twitter as well yeah my Twitter is at It's Chewy so that's I-T-S C H E W W Y is on one of our little kind of overlays type things, so maybe kind of can quickly bring that up just to show you guys it in case you do forget that. So please come and say hello to us. Let us know what you thought of the stream. Let us know how we can improve. Come and have a chat. We're always around to chat once the stream finishes. So we hope you've enjoyed our broadcast for today. Thank you so much to everybody who's followed, who's subscribed, who's tuned in, and who has had good fun watching the games. Make sure to go and check out the official ESL TV underscore CS stream where Titan are uh, currently being in cloud 993 um, on dust2 and make sure you catch the last game there which will be the losers match of group d but that's going to be all for us so kind of any last words no again hats off to everyone I according to my obs ever since we started uh, streaming today Joe, we've been streaming for 10 hours straight which i think is the longest we've ever done and it's phenomenal the amount of viewers we've had you guys are all awesome, honestly. Just don't know how 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 to how to thank you. I even I even feel sorry for the guy who subbed just to tell us we were pronouncing a name wrong. It's like <laughs> if I could refund him, I would, but but unfortunately, Twitch have uh, ate up half of his money now. But anyways, guys, again, we we do do giveaways from time to time. We do do case openings. Chewie was planning on doing some sort of case opening after tonight, but I'm not sure if you want to go to bed, Chewie, after. Yeah, I think I yeah. do. I've not had much sleep recently, so Fair I'm going to go well, straight sure, to bed. I'm sure everyone who's following the channel will, will get a, get an alert or an email, of course, the next time we go live if we are doing case openings and stuff. Obviously, I opened about 20 cases so far this week and got absolutely nothing, and everyone just sits in the chat and laughs at me. But, guys, we're going to call it a day. It's been awesome. You guys are the reason it's been awesome and the players have, have, have done a decent job as well but hopefully we've entertained you hopefully yeah I don't know what else to say and I think we'll, we'll we, we hit 15,000 we hit 15,000 salute to go. everyone salute, salute to everyone to everybody. thank and you guys if anyone's wondering about the music it's monster cat the playlist the Spotify playlist at the bottom of the stream is not the music that's been playing that music is Spotify stuff it's real stuff that Twitch or Google doesn't allow anymore. So if you want to listen to the playlist, just go onto YouTube and search for Monster Cat. And hats off to them for sponsoring us and allowing us to use their music on our stream. But that's going to be it from us, guys. We'd really appreciate if you know you just stuck around and just kept the kept the kept the stream minimized. Even it it, it helps us out. It lets us keep the stream on for longer. And uh, it just goes to sh it shows the world how awesome the Counter Strike community is by having uh, uh, a stream with so many viewers still online for such a long period of time. But well, that's going to be it from me. Any last words, Chewy, from you? No, just thank you very much, guys, for 15k. As I said, we started the day on 7.7k, and that really does make it awesome. We've had a great day of casting, thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, make sure to tune in to the rest of tonight's games, and make sure to tune in tomorrow, Saturday, and Sunday for ESL 1, because there will be plenty of games left to come. So shout out to all of you guys, shout out to my good buddy Kana for letting me cast, and finally, a good shout out to the guys at ESL 1 for letting us cast some games and uh, giving us a great tournament. And we'll see you again very soon.